maybe we start. All right, the first question regarding the smart home. First question is, what device you are using right now? Is a tablet, a PC, a computer, a laptop, or a phone, or a netbook? Please give me your answer. All right, next question. So most of you is using, just now, I can see most of you are using a PC. It's good because we need the PC to do the hands-on. If you use the phone, actually it's very hard. I have Google Chrome in my device. Uh, this is to check whether you are using, you have Google Chrome in your device or not. Okay, please give me your answer, true or false. Yeah, good. Only three don't have Google Chrome, but I think it still can use. Depends on the compatibility. Next question. What make a smart home? What a smart home can do, sorry. What a smart home can do is a controlling, monitoring, automated, or all of the above. Please choose your answer. I want to see how many of you know about smart home. Yeah, I think all of you, almost all of you know what a smart home can do. Okay, thank you for your uh, joining for this car whole session. Okay, let's start now. I think uh, most of you are qualified to join in the hands-on based on the survey just now. All right. Uh, before we start, uh, I think you already see that you need to check your latest email and get ready your class code and the nickname in order to join the hands-on. If you don't, don't want to join the hands-on, you still can carry on because um, you can see the demo as well. Okay, no worry. And you are recommended to join in using the PC or laptop. Okay, okay let's start. All right. Uh, this is the disclaimer that some of the image are using for illustration purpose only, okay? So about me, I'm Mr. Leung Chun Fan from uh, Faculty of IT in Utah, okay? I'm a lecturer teaching the computer engineering. Uh, you can anytime visit uh, my page, homepage and this link. Uh, actually, today's title is a smart home design design with a uh, thinker cat uh, because just now look mom i just make my home smart okay uh, you may you may not see it clearly actually the actual name is smart home design with thinker cat first of all i would like to introduce to you what is thinker cat what is thinker cat you can search for thinker cat from the wikipedia this link thinker cat actually is a free online 3D modeling program, simplicity and ease of use, and its popular platform for 3D printing. It's founded as a company in 2010 in European Union. So you may have a big question, right? Until now, we haven't seen smart home yet. So in that, from the previous description, actually, it didn't talk about smart home. How can it be done? In fact, Autotest has acquired Thinkercad in 2013. And four years later, the electronic lab from Autotest has been merged into the Thinkercad. That's why it made the smart home become possible. All right. So next, what makes a home smart? So a home is smart because of following. Just now we have one Kahoot question, right? Uh, some most of you give me the same answer, which is controlling, monitoring, automated. All of these three will make your home smart. Okay, that's why if you just automated but you can't control it wirelessly or remotely, 
it's still not yet smart enough yet. If you can't monitor your home, you're also not smart enough. You just automated it. Okay, that's why we need all of these three components. So this is the diagram, the, the highlight. It's a it's a tray diagram to illustrate to you what I will be what I will cover for today. Okay, basically I will cover all these uh, blue blue blocks, lighting, fan or air control, distance sensing, motion sensing, vibration sensing. I won't cover because of uh in Tinkercad we don't have this vibration sensor. Okay, uh, and also the automated part also will be covered as well. So how to do? Lighting controlling, you can use switch, fan or aircon. Also use switch. And uh, for distance sensing, we use a uh, ultra sensor, vibration sensor for a uh, vibration sensing. What about motion sensing? Motion sensing, we can use the motion sensor. Actually, it's an infrared sensor. Okay, infrared can use as a motion sensor. So we will first cover the first one lighting switch so how can we control or automate it I means we need to control and automate the lighting control so there are a few things first you can use your mobile apps to control the light turn on or turn off or even adjust the brightness secondly you can automate it uh, during night time you will automate it to turn on and daytime we turn off So far, okay, next will be the fan or air con. This also can be done by using the switch. How can we control and automate the air con? So basically, we are using the same idea. We use the smartphone or apps or remotely to control the air con to turn on or turn off so that before you reach home, you have your environment is a cool, is your, is your uh, cool enough okay what about fan control fan control is similar you can also use the apps to control it as well as you can automate it how to automate it during temperature increase okay if you automate it will uh, auto turn on next you we'll go through the ultra sensor oh, sorry yeah, this is a ultrasonic sensor. So in order to sense the distance, we need to use the ultrasonic sensor in your car port sensing. So why we need that? For example, when you park your car, getting closer and closer, okay, you may don't know in front of your car got any obstacle or anything of object blocking your way or not, or even your your front house thing, uh, you may hit on it, right? That's why we need a sensor. And this ultrasound sensor will sense your distance and it will alert you. Next is the vibration sensor. Vibration sensor, you need to uh, use the vibration sensor to prevent the thief break into your house. Okay, when somebody break into your house, yeah, the alarm will turn on. Next is the motion sensor. Motion sensor is if the thief is inside your house already, but during the night time, not you are not supposed to have any object is moving inside your house. That's why you need to detect motion sensing. So this is uh, another level of sensing so that to detect the thief and uh, turn on the alarm. Any more? Actually, there are still many. This including the keyless fingerprint scanning, CCTV with motion sensing, smart TV with voice control or gesture controlling, intelligent washing machine, and many more. So, these are the things that make the home smart. You can see many things can be controlled. We call intelligent or smart home. Okay. This is a typical example of a smart home. Next, 
I think we should start the implementation and hands-on because as I saw many of you have the PC and meeting for the implementation and hands-on because it may take longer time to do it. That's why I will focus more on implementation and hands-on. Okay, let's start to make your home smart. Is there any newcomer that they cannot follow? Okay. Uh, uh, basically for the newcomer, uh, the latecomer, okay, uh, just now we just introduced what make a home smart. Now we only start, you can still join in by, I mean, by now, no worry. Let's check. All right. All right, uh, for the implementation and hands-on, first thing first, you need to go to thinkercat.com. Next, you need to click join now. I will slow down a bit because some of you maybe uh, takes some time to join in the thinkercat.com and okay. If you all right, uh, I think I should proceed. Okay, or you can directly go to the thinkercat.com, join class also can, then you will switch away, come to here. Okay, from here, you need to press student and join a class, okay? Next, you need to type your class code. This is the class code that already sent to you, uh, could be just now or could be yesterday, okay? In the latest email, in the invitation link there, okay, you have a class code provided to you. You need to type it in, and then tap, and then click go to my class. Next, you need to type your nickname. Uh, in the email, I, I call it nickname ID because nickname, you will think that is your own chosen uh, nickname. That's why I call it nickname ID. That means it's a unique nickname that I uh, assigned, that assigned to you. You cannot simply type your nickname. You must choose the, you must type the nickname provided to you in the email in order to join in the class. Yeah, for the, for the class, if you see smart home one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, you are, then you join the right class. If you see something else, you didn't see smart home, that means you join the wrong, the wrong class, okay? Just please ensure that, that you join the, the correct classroom. In the chat room there, oh, also got teach you, I give you the link, provide you the link, as well as the instruction step one, step two, and step three, and, up, and so on, how to join the class. Finally, you just click, that's me. Then you successfully join, and please wait for a while first. Okay, I think we should proceed where you get your code, okay. This is the code, nickname ID, this is your nickname. First, you need to type in your class code. Secondly, you need to type your nickname. These are the smart home class that I have created for you. Smart home one, two, three, four, five, because we, um, there may be more participants come in, that's why I create more class, because one class only can accommodate 50 students. Uh, you cannot simply type the class code, I mean the, the class code here, you must follow your own nickname. Uh. All right. Next, okay. Once you started your Thinkercat, you should able to, you should see this screen. Uh, let me check is, uh, if many of you already joined in or not. Okay, for the smart home one class one, 
Yeah, I think a lot of you already joined in. I can see many of you already joined in because you can see the blue, blue actually is already just some of you haven't joined in yet. Never mind. Smart Home 2. Yeah, I already have many of you join in also. Smart Home 3. Also got many of you already join in. All right. Without waiting, I think uh, we just process as a smart home form. Let's see the smart home form. Let's get some of the oh, you cannot join in. Smart homes five. Yeah, can join in. Smart home six. Smart homes actually not many because it's a extra one. Actually, this one join as a guest. Okay, uh, maybe it's all right. Never mind. Let's start. Okay. Once you are in this screen, what you need to do? Okay, first thing first, you need to click the circuit. You must go to the circuit. By default, it's a 3D design, it's a 3D printing. Okay, you must click the circuit. After that, you need to click on the create new circuit. Can follow? Okay. Next. After that, you should be able to see this screen. Okay, what you need to do in this screen. Okay, here is the platform for you to create your smart home, so called. Okay. And here is for you to search for the components, like sister, LED, or any sensor that you want in order to create your smart home. Okay. And this is a place to place your component using drag and drop. At the moment, you, you don't do anything first, you just listen. So after you search for your components you want, then you drag and drop into this space here. And you need to connect your components, right? How to do the connection? Let's say you place a LED and a resistor here. So you also use click, to drag, click to connect the components. How to do it? I will demo to you. So first you click on the leg of one of the components and then drag it to another leg of the components and click again, then it will join it together. Lastly is to change your name to the light control because the first hands-on will be light control. That's why you need to change your name to like control at this uh, particular column. So let's do for the first one, switch. We need to do the controlling of the light as well as automate the light. So this is the thing just now I explained to you, we need to do this. All right, this is the circuitry that you need to construct. You need to construct this circuit in your smart home classroom in the thinker cat there uh, I will show you in on the spot here okay okay so Ah, this one. Okay, at the very beginning, you should see nothing in your platform, right? What you should add into your platform, okay? Okay, in order to construct this circuit, so first of all, you need to search the first component, which is Arduino. You type Arduino. And then click on the first component and place it anywhere here. You can enlarge or reduce the size of the components by scrolling up or scrolling down. Scrolling up 
or scrolling down, okay? You can enlarge it as large as possible. So next components that I want to search for, uh, this is the component, is the Arduino. Maybe I put, a, put something here so that you know what you need to search for because some of you maybe miss up what I'm talking. So I put Arduino here. So next component is the LED. So you just try and drop this component into here. Okay, this is the LED. You can change the LED color to any color you like. I prefer green, that's why I change to green. You just select this LED, then you will have a box come up for you to change the value. You can change the color here. You can change to any color, orange, green, or blue. Okay, let's choose green. So now we need to connect. Uh, before we connect, we need to add another one more component, let's sister. This one, maybe I put it here so that you know this is a LED for those who don't know what is this. Okay. Next component is the resistor. Ah, this is the resistor. So by default, the resistor is in a vertical form. You just press it first, never mind. After that, you can turn it using this button, rotate, or you can press R also can. You can press your keyboard R also can turn it. Okay. You need to rotate it, become horizontal. Then you can connect. Uh, there are two ways to connect this. You can either to connect using like just now grid, drag, and the grid again, or you can directly just stick it together. Uh, it's already connected. Okay. And then you need to connect your wiring, connect to the pin 7. Um, yeah, connect to the pin 7 for the band. This one is a slightly band leg. You need to connect to pin 7. And this one you need to connect to the GND ground, okay? So that the LED can turn on in a loop because this is the power to supply the electric power, the electric uh, signal. And then this one will be one loop. That means it could positive and negative. That's why you can turn on this LED later on. Okay. So I put this name here so that you know this is the resistor. All right. Next. Uh, before. Okay, next we need to connect another one more component. Uh, resistor, we need one more. So you connect one more resistor. Do you connect like this? Make it horizontal as well. And then you need to find the ambient light sensor. Can you see it? No? So we connect to the five wood for one of the leg. Wow, this one we connect to the. Uh, so we connect to the. Ground. Okay, just like that. So I would put in a MBLI sensor here so that you know. This is MBLI light, light sensor. 
Next, you need to connect one more pin. Uh, actually, already done. Just that you need to connect one more wire from here, from the A0. Go to here. In this case, you will see all the wiring is in a green color. Actually, it's already working. Just that um, I will prefer to change to the different color for the wiring. You can change the wiring, the wire color to any color you like. Uh, but normally, we follow the convention. Negative, you should use black color. Positive, we should use positive five volt. We should use red color. And this is the input to sense the signal. I mean, to sense the light, the brightness, and then go into the processor. This is a processor, actually. Okay. We use blue color or any color you, you like. Doesn't matter. This one is the ground. So that's why we just choose black color as well. Okay. And this one's give it a green color. So is there any? Okay, actually the connection already done. So I will show you the screen again so that you, you will know what is happening. Yeah, this is a slide. It's the same connection, just that uh, the orientation is slightly different, but uh, the connection is the same. Next, we need to try the code. Okay, we need to try the code, see how it works. So before that, we try not to control all these things, but we just turn on this, uh, you want to control this uh, internal built-in LED. Here you can see the L here. So this is an internal built-in LED. We try to turn it on and turn off this internal built-in LED, see if you can do it or not. So you click on the code. Can you see the code here? All right, by default, it's already have a code for you inside this platform here. So you just press start running simulation, then you will be able to see the LED, the begin LED to turn on and turn off repetitively. You can press the start simulation. Ah, you can see, I can zoom it in for it to show you. You can see the LED turn on and turn off, right? Okay. Because the code already tell you, set the built-in LED to high means turn on, wait for one second, and then set the bring built-in LED to low. That means on, off, and then after that, it will repeat. Keep on repeating. Okay. Before we continue, uh, you stop simulation first. I wonder some of you cannot uh, follow. That's why I will present my slide how to how to do this one more time. Okay, these are the things just now we construct. Okay. Uh, we haven't changed the resistor value yet. Later, we need to change it. 330 and 10k. Okay. And we use the pin 7 to turn on the LED. And we use the A0 to rate the brightness of the environment. All right. And the ambient light sensor will record the ambient light, I mean, the ambient uh, brightness condition. So, Let's see how to do this. To start program, you need to press the code. After that, to run the program, you need to press start, uh, start or stop simulation here. And then the built-in LED will turn on and turn off. How is the code run? The code actually is running from top to the bottom. After that, it will go back to the top and then run again, run again, keep on looping. It's a forever loop. 
to run this code okay it will not stop okay so in order to delete the blocks you can drag and drop the blocks to the trust pin the trust pin or the dust pin okay and you can choose different blocks to do your program by selecting your group of the blocks here you got many output input notation control max and variable and you can drag and drop your block here in order to do your program okay the implementation for the hands-on for the automated lighting control actually the idea is very simple we want to check if the brightness rating is less than 1000 or not if less than 1000 we consider is stuck is dim enough then we will turn on the led light at pin 7 else we will leave the led light turn off so this is the idea for the first smart home hands-on okay how to do this later on you need to drag and drop this code uh, these blocks in order to do the coding so you need to create a variable for brightness and then read the a0 a0 actually is the brightness rating after that you need to create a if else then uh, if then else so if the brightness less than uh, 1000 just now here i put 1000 here you need to change to 1000 then you set the pin 7 to high else you will set the pin 7 to low that's all okay we try to do this later uh this code actually uh is the is a programming code you don't need to worry you just follow this uh block easy for you to do okay this one you don't need to do okay so just build this one okay let's try to build this one you go to the code here so you drag and drop this one to the you don't want this already okay now you start to create your code follow just now the so first of all you need to create the variable of the brightness once you create brightness a variable then you will see this come out already so you try and drop this one the first one and then where you get the brightness value in so your brightness value value your brightness value actually is get from the sensor here so your sensor is connected to the a0 you see that or not a0 okay that's why you need to input this is the input a0 as the input you know go to input red analog pin a0 drag and drop put inside this uh this here you can enlarge or make it small using okay read analog pin a0 and then next is the if then if then else you need to go to the control here here you can go to if then else you choose the if then else block here and drop and stick it together this is like a parcel you know when you get it close it will stick together you don't need to worry about or accurately to to place it because when you get it nearer you just release your hand then you will stick it together really okay next thing is if the brightness less than 1000 then you turn on right so when you do is you need to go to the mathematics here so mathematics block got many one of it is the compare so you need to try and drop the compare block the second one go to here then you go back to the variable here brightness drag and drop into here when brightness less than 1000 then you do what you need the output because you need to output the LED to turn on or turn off, right? Less than 1000 should turn on or turn off. Turn on, right? So you need to, uh, when here, you don't choose the first one. 
First part is the built-in LED. We want to turn on our own LED. Our LED is connected to the pin 7. So what you need to do is you set your pin 7 to high. And then another one else, you need to set a pin 7 to low. Oh, sorry, here. Else, you set a pin 7 to low. Supposingly, you're already done. Just that I now remember, just now we forgot to change the resistor value. The resistor value by default is 1K. 1K is too large to block the electric signal to turn on the LED. We change it to 300 or 330 also can. 330. Remember, change this one to OMA. So I'll put uh, something here if you've forgotten. Just in case you've forgotten, this is the resistor of between zero ohm, and this is the resistor of. I add one more resistor here, and notation. This resistor is ten k ohm. I hope you can follow. Okay. If you can't follow, at least you can see how 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 I do it. Later, you still can do. Okay, now already done. But this one is one k only. You need to add one more zero so that it become ten k. Once you're already done, you can try the simulation by click on the start simulation. So normally we hide the code first. You click one more time, you will hide. Click one more time, you will uh, appear. Okay, the code. So you press start simulation. Now uh, you can see the LED light is turned on already, right? It's because of too dark. So you press on the MBL light sensor here. How to adjust the brightness of the... Okay. You press here. You increase the brightness here. Then the LED light will turn off. Reduce the brightness, LED light will turn on. You see that? Again, I move this one to somewhere. The one it block. Okay. Again, I start simulation again. So you can see the LED light here is turned on. So when you you can increase the or reduce the brightness by pressing the ambient light sensor one time. And then it will, it, will, it will come up this one for you to adjust the brightness to simulate the brightness of the environment. So you can increase the brightness, then the LED light will turn off. When you reduce the brightness, then the LED light, the LED light will turn on. Okay, let me see any one of you have done already. Let me go back to the classroom there. See whether you can follow or not. Anyone can follow. Later, we only come back. Uh, by the way, uh, I forgot to tell you one thing. How do you know that your code is safe or not safe? Okay, what you need to know is you observe the status on the top right hand corner first. At the top right hand corner, there is a status called safe. Okay, that means it's already safe. For example, if you move, move this one to somewhere else, it will saving and then after that all change safe. That means once it's already safe, you are in a very uh you are very safe to go up already. How to go up from here? Just press the tinker cat on your top left hand corner here. Okay, let's see the class. My smart home class. See any one of you have already done? Smart home one, let's see. Yeah, lighting control. I can see he already con. Uh, this this student already done already. I can see his secretary already done. That means you really can follow. Good.
I think uh, the time is very limited. I think we can proceed the next one. Okay. How about aircon? Okay, aircon the con. Uh, I use a motor to con. You can build the circuitry using this method. So you need to find the temperature sensor, DC motor, and connect this. You can screenshot it and then you do it later because I I wonder I don't have enough time to share with you. Okay, you can screenshot this one or take use a camera later. You can continue do it. Okay, you can screenshot this one. Temperature sensor and then one DC motor connect to the pin five and then connect to the GNT and this one connect to the uh, A1 and this one connect to five wood, this one connect to the ground. Okay, and you need to, after that, then the idea is like this. If the temperature more than 25 degrees Celsius, you turn on the aircon at pin five. Else you turn off the aircon. So this is the code. You also can screenshot this code so that later on you can follow this to, to create the blocks to make your program work. Okay, you just need to build this one. Okay, next is the motion sensor. Motion sensor is uh, is the uh, is quite easy as well. You need three components only. One is the B saw. You find the B saw. You can screenshot this one. And one PIR sensor. And one one hundred ohm resistor here. You can screenshot this one. Or take a picture of this. Later, I will demo to show you, okay, how can get all this done, okay? The idea is, if the motion de motion is detected at pin 2, then you will turn on the silent at pin 5 for 2 seconds. Else, you will turn off the silent at pin 5. That means if you've got motion, then you turn on the silent. If no, no motion, then you turn off the silent, okay? And you only need to screenshot or take a picture of this one so that later on you can build, build your own circuitry. I mean, uh, can build your code. Okay, it's very simple code in order to implement this uh, logics. Okay, the logic flow. The next one is the distance sensing. Distance sensing, you need to use three components as well. One is the ultrasonic distance sensor, and one is the B saw, and one is the 100 ohm. B saw is to work as a alarm, a silent to turn on. So when the car is approaching closer and closer to the ultrasonic sensor, then it will turn on the B saw. Uh, it will turn on the silent. So you take a picture of this one. So the implementation idea is like this: how it work. So when the car is approaching, go get closer and closer, then the trigger signal, D7, we send a trigger signal, and then the trigger signal hit on the car, and then we bounce back, travel back, with an echo signal, and receive at the D6. So it based on the travel time, from trigger to back to the echo, take how long? In millisecond or even microsecond, then you will able to calculate how far away of the car using this equation, okay, but uh, you don't need to know about the equation at the moment. So, this is the thing. Uh, if pulse in time is less than 20 centimeter, then we turn on the silent. Or you can set 50 centimeter also can. Uh, the code is more complicated because this is the uh, most compressed one. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Uh, I, can, I can zoom it in. And zoom it in for you to take a look on this code. If you want to implement it later on, you still can do it, okay? Uh, these are the code, you can screenshot it. Okay.
next one. Okay, what about further exploration? So until now, we haven't talked about how can we control using the mobile phone, right? Yeah, actually you can do it, but in, in one hour time is not enough for me to do it. That's why I will just show you, okay? Uh, actually, you can make it more complex. Just now what you have learned, you can implement all into your house or your home. At the ground floor, for example, you have uh, control many things here. And you also have a car sensor here. And also have a motion sensor here. And temperature control. And this is a first floor. You also can have, you also can combine all the things together. And this is the example of, I have done it before that to connect the first floor and the second floor, you need two Arduino board in order to communicate each other so that you can implement the whole house smart home. So in order to do that, just as I mentioned, you, in order to control remotely or wirelessly, you need a Wi-Fi module, ESP8266 with the Arduino board just now and uh, a software called Bring. This Bring software actually you can download it from the uh, googleplay.com and you also can search, you also can go to this uh, bring.io okay, in order to edit your mobile apps in order to do the controlling. Finally, you will be able to get this uh, mobile app in your phone and control your house, uh, turn on or turn off or whatsoever. So eventually you will make your home smart with IoT solution, just now as presented to you. Okay, for further exploration, of course, if you would like to really learn all this about, I will highly recommend you to come to join us. So where are we? We are, you go to this study.edu.my and go to the cost, go to the uh, faculty of information technology. This is the information of and communication technology. And you can come to here to, we have, to, we have offered total of six courses or six program we call. The first one is the computer science, it's in software, purely software. Second one is the inform, business information system, which is a software plus business. Next one is the information system, it's a software plus information system, database kind of thing. So next one is a software plus networking. And computer engineering is taught, is you will learn software plus hardware. And software engineering is similar to the computer science. One is offered in uh, Gampa, one is offered in, in uh, Sungai Long. So, this other thing. Uh, computer engineering is the one that you can learn all the software and hardware just now. Just now what I teach you, if you're really interested to learn both software and hardware, like the smart home just now I teach you, then you need to join our program, Computer Engineering. For further any information, you can come to our, you can you can uh, have a live chat in a study.uda.edu.my or you can WhatsApp to this uh, number or you, okay. Do you have any question? I've end my uh, presentation for today. Do you have any question and if you have any question please type your question in the chat room there then i try to answer you
It seems all of you are busy doing the Tinker Cat or maybe let me check how many of you have done the Tinker Cat. Uh, just an addition things to you okay after the class if you still want to continue uh, without joining the class yes you can do it what you should do actually is you can uh, use your email account to join the Thinkercad create your personal account so that you can have all the circuitry built inside and then continue use it okay uh, at the moment I can share with you my smart home design so that you can have the answer for it I will share it out you can search it later on Okay, let me demonstrate a little bit for you since no question. Okay, a uh, very fast one. For the car post sensing, what you should what you should you should able to see actually is like this. Uh, sorry. Yeah, go the wrong one. Okay, I will I share up all this one for you to the public so that you can search for it. Broad base. I share to the public. I will share all this so that you have the answer. All right, I already share to you all. This time I also share to you. Broad base. Okay, Up, later on, you just need to go to the gallery here in order to get my answer. Okay, just to go to the gallery here and directly go to the circuit. And search for it. Tap. You just add block base. Okay, block base. Yeah, you were able to search all the all the circuitry I said I, I shared it just now, okay? For example, block base motion sensing, okay?
Hi students, uh, so this is Miss Lee, the admin for this group and uh, we really thanks for Mr. Leong sharing the insightful sharing and uh, we hope you really learn from these sections and actually we still have another few sections about IT uh, webinar, please feel free to join us and please feel free to fill up the Google form, uh, I will be posted in, uh, All right, in thank the you very much. If no question, then uh, that's all for today. Thank you. Yes, I will be posted uh, the, the upcoming IT webinar for your reference. So please join us. Here they are. Okay, thank you. All right, so now uh, some, some of you asked the question where you can get the smart home example, right? Okay, I will show you just for a while, okay, here, how to get the smart home example, okay. So, all right, those haven't, leave, haven't left yet, okay, you can come to, okay, go to the gallery here. And then search for it, press the search button here. And in the search here, you need to press the circuit, the second one. And then, just now I share a few smart home example for you all. You just need to dive in block base search. Ah, these are the all the smart home example that I have covered for today. Automated aircon control, block based motion sensing, and block based carport sensing. But I don't have enough time to demo to you. You can you can copy it. How to copy it? Okay, for example, for the carport sensing, you just press tinker this. Tinker this actually is a copy this. Uh. Okay. Okay, out of here, you, uh, the circuit tree already built for you correctly, and the code also available for you already. You just need to run it only. Ah, when you run it, you can you can hear the sound as well. Okay, how do when the car approaching this one? You just press one time this one. So when your car approaching nearer and nearer, then the alarm will sound. The silent is out. You can you can see the silent is sound. See, although I uh, don't have sound here, but you can see the silent sound. Okay, or you move it away far away from it, then you will not sound. When the car get closer and closer, it will start to sound. Okay, this is uh, one of it. So similarly for others, similarly for others. Uh, actually, this one already set in your in your in your uh, in your design okay you can just name, name this one actually you can name it a one two or three or whatsoever okay is there any other question i just share out just now the block base that means uh, using the block to create the So you can do the same for others, uh huh? Like blocks, base. Okay. So same, same for the automated aircon control and the motion. Think of this. 
For the motion, you just press start simulation and then click on the motion sensor here. When there is a motion, you have a motion, then the sound will turn on. The alarm will turn on for two seconds only. This is the code. The code actually is provided you here. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, for any further question, you can email to me. Okay, you can find the, you can find up, you can find my email from the website. Okay, you can email to me. Okay. Thank you.